Welcome to your more course. I'm going to take a minute and walk you through kind of the outline of the course. I uh, hope you find this helpful. So I'm going to start off here in the main screen when you're logging in. Please don't forget about this top right hand corner where we have the change user info. This area is extremely helpful to make sure you always have a current email in. Um, I highly recommend checking this box to say to notify you when uh, a message is received in the system that you can't respond, but at least you get an email letting you know that your professor has written to you and you can see what that message is. Um, and then there are other other options in here but those that would be the main one that I would want to make sure we have in there. If you do need to change your password this is another place you can have that get that done. Please do not change those settings unless you have an issue talk to your professor otherwise and we're gonna go ahead and click update and there we go. Now the next thing um, we are going to go and take a look at our actual course. So I'm going to pop into our Math 155 course, uh, but this is going to be true for all sorts of courses, even if you're not taking Math 155. Here's your, your general layout. You may see a course calendar at the top of your, your screen. Uh, this is a great place to help you understand when and where your homework is, uh, and, and specifically when it is due. So you will notice here I have some homework coming up. That's why it is orange. Homework that's further out would be green. So the due dates uh, are, are color coded. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on this date. This is something that students like to do. They click into here and they can see, ooh, these are the assignments I need to do this day. And you can use this almost as a checklist to click into doing an assignment. That works. But when you do it this way, opposed to going through the course itself, you miss out on the books and the other materials we have to help support your learning. So please uh, highly recommend um, use this if you know you are ready for the homework, but otherwise nav navigate to the assignments otherwise. You will also see the due dates and times. Uh, that is super helpful. Um, to make sure you understand that it may or may not be due at midnight on that day. Uh, in this case, it's due at 10 a.m. And you will also be able to use late passes if your instructor allows it. Um, so this will allow you after the due date to still access the assignment and finish up um, content that you are working on. Now, the next um, the next piece that I'm going to talk about here is this block here. This is a block that ten we tend to. Um, skip over a lot is the syllabus calendar and due dates textbook resources this is where you go when you need things that are general to the entire class whether it's your instructor's information the syllabus for the course where do you go for tutoring and resources just in general as far as PV um, calculators and where is the actual physical textbook located um, so and I believe if you go into here you will even find the download options for those textbooks so it does say purchase but some of those purchase options are actually free. So make sure you use that if you are looking for the textbook. The next piece here is the day one start here assignments. Uh, in here you will find the course format video. Well if you're watching this video you've already found it. Uh, but what I wanted to point out is you will notice um, you also have your syllabus calendar due dates, uh, the syllabus quiz. This is our, your first day one kind of getting used to the course assignments. But I do want to point out, do you notice how each of these has a little bubble on them? This bubble is really helpful because you will see if it's half filled, uh, it means you've opened the assignment, but you you have not completed anything. It's showing you you're in progress. Once you complete an assignment, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say I've done this, you will see that this bubble, we're going to go back, is now full. So this is a visual indicator of how, how much of the assignment have I done. And you can actually put your mouse on top of it and you'll see it says my score is 100%, where here my, I haven't even started this assignment yet. So there's our day one information. Now, this is a little bit bigger. This is flow of the course. This is what we expect to see uh, as we go through the class. You're going to see modules popping up throughout the entire course. Right now, uh, you may see module one and two available. I'm going to click into module one so you can kind of see the layout. At the top, we always give you your notes. Now, we, uh, 
Some professors print your notes for you, and, and that's wonderful. But what I wanted to point out in here is also the key to those notes. So if you are looking for them already filled out, you want to look back and verify, did you copy something down right? Did you do a problem right? We provide you with the filled out notes. So please understand this is where you go to find them. And these will unlock uh, as, you're, as you progress in the course. Then you have your individual sections. So uh, please review, view to the calendar, see when each of these are coming up. You'll see, um, so on this day, or I should say, let's, let's go here. There we go. You'll see 1A and 1B are due on the 21st, and then 1C and 1D are due on Wednesday. So you'll see, um, they kind of get chunked, chunked usually in pairs. So you can see this would be like our first day of lesson. This would be our second day of lesson. And what I want to point show you here is in each of the lessons, you are going to have the reading. Okay, so this top link with the little globe next to it uh, brings you to the actual book. So instead of looking at the book as a whole, you can look at the book for that section. Then there are the video lesson assignments. Now, video lesson assignments um, the may or may not be uh, required, depending on your professor. But you'll see these are literally a video. You say, I have watched this video. You submit it. You have your your score. What I will uh, point out is we can see how long you have been in here. We can see if you actually watch the video. So if you do this, you say you've watched this lesson and you have completed the assignment and that's what you do, we will know that that's what you did. And that's okay <laughs> uh, if you actually know the math. So watch the assignments if needed. Um, then the pre-class assignment, these are typically due before you take the you go to class on the section the 1e section so you're going to do this notice it's due on this particular class january 27th at 10 a.m because class i'm assuming starts at 10 a.m or maybe 10 30 on this date this must be completed before to be able to do this you will have to have watched or understood the material from these video lessons so the pre-class assignment is due before you learn about 1E, and then the assignment 1E is due after you've learned that assignment. So notice your lesson was on the 27th, so this assignment is due the 28th, having you be prepared for your next, the, these students will be prepared for their, their Wednesday assignment. So um, you'll kind of see the flow and the structure and how this works. Now, um, I'm gonna also pop in here to, you'll see the due dates are right here, the time that it's due is right here, we could use a late pass by clicking. So if I happen to miss this deadline, life happens, we can use our late passes. So we would just click it. And we'd say, your, your professor may have different rules, but you say, yes, I'm gonna redeem a late pass. And now I've given myself an extension on that assignment. And if you realize I was able to finish it before the deadline, we can always unuse the late pass and you get it back. And I go back to the original due date. Um, so it's just kind of good to give yourself that, that sense of knowing that you are, you're covered. You had a late pass to use, you could see your new due date, and you can always undo it if you, if you'd like. Um, now I'm going to actually click into assignment because I want to, I want to show you guys a little bit of how to navigate and what we're looking at. So you, when you click in, you should see, um, your, your problem with answer blanks. Uh, now, when I click into it, you'll notice our calc pad pops up, and this should be all of the tools that you need to be able to answer this problem. So if I need to write a fraction, I click that, and now I have the fraction. If I need to have an exponent, like x raised to the fourth, I click this little raised to, and I get to the fourth. And I can use the arrow keys, and I can, there's all sorts of shortcuts that we can do on our our keyboard to do these things as well. So for example, if I do a forward slash, I get the fraction line as well. But the the goal is understanding or is ho hoping that what you are typing in is what you had on your paper and it visually looks the same because uh, we want to remove that frustration, hopefully, um, of trying to type things into the computer. Uh, to make the calc pad go away, click away. Click somewhere in the white space and it will go away. So I'm going to go ahead and just make up an answer. I'm going to say it's seven. Now, when I hit submit, we're going to have something happen, but what I want to point out here is we have some stuff here on the right-hand corner. This is showing my score so far. Right now, I have a 0 out of 1 because I've got nothing right. I have three tries on this problem, and I can regenerate this problem 98 times. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and submit. Okay, I did not get that right. Now, 
what I want you to understand is if I click this, it's going to regenerate a whole new problem. I get three tries. So don't click this until you've used your three tries, until you've done everything you can to get through this problem as, you know, and, and not have to start all over from the beginning. So I got this wrong. So um, I'm going to go ahead and retry. Now I get three tries. That is three tries per answer blank. So you'll notice this one I've used one try. These two, I have not tried anything. So when I click up in the details, it'll tell me. On part one, I have two tries remaining. Part two, I have three. And part three, I still have three. So I have that going for me. I still have 98 reattempts. And the reason it's saying I have two to three tries is because on one of them I have two and the other ones I have three. So if I, if I put in another random answer here, Oh, got it wrong again. Now you'll see I have one to three tries remaining. And so that's kind of what that means. And if you say, I would like some help, notice there are video helps right here. So when you click these, you'll get a little lesson on, on how to do this problem. Um, this is big. Message the instructor. We all really want you to use this. Not too fast. We want you to try to think through the problems, do them on your own. But when you get stuck, instead of throwing something at your computer screen, click this button. What happens when you do that? You'd say in here, depending on what your what your instructor wants, we're going to say it's two and then the instructor. Um, you're going to it, notice here it gives you all the information that the instructor needs. They already know the problem number. They know where it's coming from. So don't touch that. Then in here, me per, as Professor Dwork, I personally like when my students upload a picture of their work. So I would ask them to click the little insert an image button and then upload a picture so I can see what they were trying. Other professors may want you to type or other professors may say, do nothing, just say help. So just find out what your professor wants and then you would type your message in here. I need help. When you do that, you send your message. Now that goes to your professor and they will know exactly the problem that you asked for help on. Uh, they see, um, they will see uh, the, I'm going to bring it up on this screen right here. Uh, do -do. They will see this. So they'll see question about question about number one in assignment 1E graphs and functions. I need help. I can see the problem. I can see this. And then I get a direct link that I can click into that brings me to your actual problem. So I can see what you typed in. I can see your previous answers. So please don't feel like you need to provide that information. Save yourself the time and just give us the information um, to get you the help that you need, whatever, whatever that is. OK, um, so I think I have covered everything I need to in here. Um, so now I am going to go back to the main page. Um, so this is the general layout. Th this is the where the modules are, right? Then you go into your individual lessons and then inside inside each lesson, you're going to have this structure reading, video lesson, pre-class and then the actual assignment. Now. We also will have a block at the very bottom that will remain at the bottom the entire course. It's the reviews and objective practice. The key thing I want you to understand right now is that we have two different tools for, for studying. You're not going to fully understand what the differences are between them, but I want you to understand there are two different types of reviews and you're going to want to use both to be prepared for the class. They are One of them will always look like this, just a review for objectives one through four. And then the other one are individual objectives, one, two, three, and four. Don't worry about what the objectives are themselves, but just understand you're going to want to use both. Um, now, I've already talked about late passes. So the last thing on my agenda I want to talk about today is the gradebook. So I'm going to go ahead and click into the gradebook and show you. Now, what we can see in here is all of the assignments and everything that's available to me at this point. Uh, you'll notice in here, this is another way to get to the assignments. Assignment 1A, if I click, it will bring me to the assignment. If I, I can click here to use a late pass on that assignment. Um, apparently that one's, I'm not allowed. So nonetheless, and you can see your scores and your grades on those assignments. Now, so let's find the 1E. Here's where we were in 1E right now. So I can, so there we go. So I can use the late pass on that one E just like I have been doing. And I can see my current score. And if I click on the score, it brings up kind of a review version 
of the assignment. So after the assignment is due, I won't be able to click here anymore because I, I, this brings you in on the left hand side, it brings you in to actually do the assignment. Clicking on the score is what you could do after it's due if you wanted to look through problems and practice but not change your grade. On the right hand side, you'll notice is our list of due dates for when the assignments are due. And then at the very bottom, we have our grade book. A lot of times I get questions on which one of these are the actual grade. I always say the pass due is the actual grade. What that means is just if the only counting the assignments that are already done, you cannot change them, this is what your grade in the class is currently. Well, right now I have a zero because nothing is past due. But <laughs> once once that starts clicking in, usually um, this is the place to look. The past due and attempted is just counting everything that's past due plus the assignments I've started. So this would just be if you stop right now and you let everything go due, this is what my score would be uh, at the moment, just given the, the few problems I've clicked into. All right, well, I hope this video helps get you comfortable with MOER, and please ask, reach out to your professor if you have any questions. That's what we're here for.